Okay, to kick off this lab tour, let's have a look at my primary electronics workbench. It's very central in the, the main working space here. Always doing stuff on it, almost every day. It's got good quality, thick block of maple wood here, measuring 64 inches by 54 inches. Nice little shelf on the bottom here. And on top, we got this equipment shelf on top. Got a really old school AM, AM FM radio. Listen to that once in a while. Got a nice Variac, um, some D DC power supplies an old fluke multimeter there just to look at whatever voltage I happen to be putting out. Right now I'm putting 80 volts onto this old school um, carbon filament light. I just put that on sometimes for ambiance. And over here we've got Agilent 33220A function generator, some decade resistor box. Here's another decade resistance, decade capacitance. And Good old-fashioned Tektronix 2236 oscilloscope. This thing is totally awesome because it has a digital readout display up here. And usually I have it set for frequency. I can measure voltage if I input some probes on here. It's just like having a little DMM built into the analog scope. Speaking of DMMs, there's also the Keithley 2000. This is the one I use most often. And another... Uh, DC supply going up to 100 volts. On top here is just storage for my seldomly used um, soldering irons and soldering gun up there. My little analog voltmeter just to monitor the line voltage. I made a video of that quite recently. And this box right here that turns off and on the incandescent lamp that I got shining down onto the table. And of course down here we have a good quality Heiko soldering station, another decade box, another little tray full of goodies like pens and pencils and markers and exacto knives. I've gotten to the habit where Sometimes it's good to have an exacto knife with nice sharp point on it like that. Sometimes it's better to have one with a rounded point on it like that. So the rounded point. So I always have it marked with a sharpie mark on the end of the shaft there. So it's very easy to pick out. And got soldering stuff in here. Solder sucker and solder wick and all that stuff is in there. Helping hands. There's water for the sponge. Here's a RSR model 2821 LCR meter and smart tweezers in here. No plus minus 15 volt supply. And I just got Dave Jones micro or yeah microcurrent gold from his Kickstarter. Haven't tested it yet couple of magnets here that I took out of some old analog meters. If I ever need to see if something is ferrous or not, I can always use those. And um, got my breadboarding wires. The long ones here and the short ones in there. And going back to the magnets, the reason I wanted to see if anything is ferrous is because down on the bottom, that's where I keep my uh, storage for scrap metals and such. We got aluminum, copper, brass, and insulated copper wire right there. I do have a larger box for, you know, when this thing gets full and I just dump all that stuff into the larger box. And, and of course we got the dust pans down here. And what else? Oh yeah. Right here in the middle, 
there's wire. Most of it is just 22 gauge solid from black to white. Got the full 10 color of the resistor color code right there. And then non-insulated and then there's 30 gauge Kynar insulated wire wrap wire. And in this spot you got these little um, corn cob holder probes that I made. I made a video about those a while back and right here is a bunch of short alligator leads stuck on magnets up here and then the longer alligator leads right here. As for tools we got nut drivers on the top small little screwdriver sets and oil and and um, contact cleaner and such tapes and glues flathead screwdriver Phillips screwdriver miscellaneous tools and torque screwdriver and down here pliers and grippers cutters and strippers nope not that kind of stripper this kind of stripper Small little vice grips. And over by the window, got this big stand, the big wire rack here with all the banana jack leads and uh, power cords hanging in the middle on the steel pipe. And over on the left is all the BNC cables. And one more thing I forgot to mention. This little circuit right here, if you're curious, I'm I'm helping one of the faculty develop a, a new lab procedure and he wants to have some kind of um, feedback control system. It's for an analog circuits course and he wanted to have a motor control system so I've got this DC motor just acting as a motor of course and being pulse width modulated down here and we got a rubber band going to this one just acting as a generator as a mechanical load really if you leave it open circuit or a short circuit or put a resistance on its on its uh, output then it acts as a very nice consistent mechanical load and there's one other very important thing to show and i usually keep it on this table and that's this very brightly colored cardboard box i painted it all the way around so it's very easy to see from across the room when everything's all cluttered i can easily find it no matter where it is these are my little twisty tie wires because I'm always wrapping up cords and putting things away and organizing stuff and I need these things all the time. So it's very important I can find this at a moment's notice. And finally one more thing I forgot to mention again is this cable tray I have up here. Most of the stuff you can see I keep it hooked up with banana jack leads all the time but I don't want them hanging down on my workbench all the time so I made this cable tray to stash them in there until I need them and of course right here we've got all these really nice alligator clips for plugging onto the banana jack leads and these come in handy too somebody made these a long time ago with the the male banana jack soldered into the alligator clip so these come in handy quite often